Please come up and tell me how you knew Katie and why you loved her. Uh, I would love to hear that, and I would love to meet each and everybody in this room. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I describe myself as Katie's best friend. <laughs> um, we met at translation school 20 plus years ago, and I forced myself upon her. I sat next to her in every class because she looked like somebody that I thought would be nice enough to be friends with me. Um, and I basically forced her to become my best friend. <laughs> uh, I like to assume that she felt the same way about me, but she would never be so forward and so bold as to say yes or no either way. Um, but we have shared many, many memories over the past 20 plus years, and um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to share some here today with all of you guys. So, I'm running this part of the show, so everybody listen up. I just want to do a bit of house cleaning stuff, housekeeping. Um, there are some letters from the speakers of the House of Commons and the Senate, where Katie worked, um, about Katie's translation services that she provided. Please feel free to take a look at those. There is a table with all of her volunteer stuff that she did. Um, there's some swag from the different volunteer organizations that she worked with. Please feel free to take some of that and share it around. And at the far back, we've got um, some of the artwork that Katie did. And um, there are little cards there. I'll mention it again later on. But please feel free to take a look through those art cards. And if one speaks to you, feel free to take it home. There's some pictures of her dog as well. If you didn't know Bosco, um, you just need to know he was the love of her life. And there are pictures and things um, back there. Also, feel free to take one of those if that's what you would enjoy. Or maybe your kids would. You never know. Um, so my vision for today is really one of laughter and smiles, sharing stories, perhaps shedding a few tears, and that's fine too. Um, but honestly, my vision for the day is one of just enjoyment and remembering Katie for all the wonderful things she did. And to that end, I'm going to be asking some trivia questions throughout the day. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure we could scrape together a prize if you really wanted to. Um, so yes, be prepared for some audience participation. I know that might be tough for some of the translators in the room who are like, super shy, but do your best. Um, so you'll see that each of the round tables has a theme about Katie and things she enjoyed doing or places she may have traveled, where she grew up. And some of the trivia questions, the answers will be found on your table. So if you did your research, like a good translator does, then you might know some of the answers. Even you may have learned some of the answers today. Um, we're also going to hear from a lot of different people who can attest to how rich and varied a Katie, uh, life Katie had. Of course, she kept most of her exploits to herself. Um, for many people, it wasn't until they read her obituary that they realized just how many circles Katie was a part of, how many different things she spent her time doing. She had a number of interests, but some she pursued more passionately than others. One of those interests was volunteering. Katie began volunteering many years ago. I remember she attended an event where you could bid on artwork, but instead of bidding in dollars, you bid in volunteer hours. I think some other people here were at that. Raise your hand if you were also at that event. Yeah. Um, and, you know, after that, quietly volunteering. She wasn't bragging about it. She wasn't boasting about it. Quietly volunteering was something that Katie did. 
She didn't mention it unless you asked about it specifically, and even then it was more of a, yeah, I'm still doing it. <laughs> so, first to be a question, can anyone name an organization that Katie volunteered with? Just shout it out. Melanie's Way. Melanie's Way. I can't, I don't have very good hearing, so I can't really hear people. Oh crap, that's a good one. refugees. With refugees, exactly, good stuff. So, helping with furniture, another one. So one organization that was very important to Katie was OCRA, which stands for Ottawa Centre Refugee Action. I believe I got that right. There are a number of people here today from that organization. Thank you for coming. And I'm going to ask Pat Wilson to come up and share a few words about that organization and Katie's involvement. Here she comes. Hello, everybody. It's great. Um, uh, my name is Pat Wilson. I'm here to tell you about the wonderful uh, volunteering, but also the very deep friendship that uh, Katie built with the, the folks at Ottawa Centre Refugee Action. We're called OCRA for short, and what we are is a community-based um, refugee um, sponsorship and settlement organization. We were founded in um, 2015, late 2015, and um, in, in response to the Syrian refugee crisis. Some of the founders of OCRA are in this room. Great to see everybody here. Um, and Katie was one of the first volunteers. I met Katie um, at a community meeting where we had over 400 people um, volunteering to try and bring um, uh, Syrian refugees to Canada and help to settle them when they got here. So um, the thing that struck me most about Katie in, in those meetings is that she, she was um, always like, ready to volunteer and, and she's like many of you will remember. Um, she had a ready smile, just like always a, a ready smile and very important in the years to come through our activities, Katie had a calming demeanor. She calmed people down around her, and boy was that ever helpful um, in some of the, the work that we were doing. So we, along with um, about 10 others, were part of Okra that teamed up to settle up a Syrian family of six with a baby on the way, and who arrived in the middle of winter. Um, and Katie coordinated with us all. She made sure that the family got what they immediately needed, which is phones, cell phones, cell phone plants, and the internet. Um, and she did that right away, she, and she knew that that would be what was needed. And she made fast friends with the Aga family. Um, she became a fast friend of mine as well. Um, the head of the Aga family, Allah Aga, couldn't be here today um, because he works in a strict workplace who wouldn't substitute him for a shift. But he sent a message I'd like to read out. Allah said, um, Pat, Katie was so kind, so wonderful. We will never forget what she did for our family. She, um, we all miss her very much. And so that's... Um, um, Katie started to help them in 2016 when she came. This is seven years later, right? So these, um, she built enduring relationships. Um, after the first sponsorship ended, uh, Katie and I agreed to carry on bringing vulnerable refugees to, um, through the private sponsorship system. Um, uh, Katie, we have a million things to do. Katie always said, I want to work in the background. <laughs> yeah. said, and I'm sure you're all familiar with She wanted to work in the background. But the stuff Katie was doing, like, she was really essential and very, very important to the, to the work we were doing. So we worked together doing this stuff for over seven years following the arrival of the Aga family. Um, she helped in 2018 to raise, uh, to get the money to bring a family from Eritrea uh, to Canada. Idris Abdelhamen in the back of the room is the head of that family. Um, and Katie also helped bring his son to Canada following that. 
um, um, there's a photo of Katie and young Holly Ma Dog on the, um, building a snowman mm -hmm. over on the table that you might like to see. Um, she also helped the Abdurrahmans get all their phones. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it, she was also um, an enthusiastic supporter back when, it, in 2021, when the Taliban took over in Afghanistan. Katie phoned me up, basically, and said, okay, what are we going to do? And I was so grateful for that, because sometimes when you do this kind of work, you feel like you're out there on the ice floe by yourself, you know? Um, so th that was great, and I heard from Katie right up through till like May of this year, of this year, when she sent out emails organizing the volunteers, bringing us all together in the groups that we would communicate with, and telling me where to get the good phone plans. <laughs> <laughs> so through all of this, you know, we didn't hear Katie um, complain about her struggles with cancer. Uh, we knew that she needed medical care from time to time, but she, she didn't talk about that. Uh, she was more interested to know the refugees that we were trying to settle and to help them where she could. She would sing and make snow people, you know, with the, with the children. She helped the adults and the teenagers with their computers. She, she'd get electricity subsidies and utility contracts for the households. She'd advise older teens on college and high school in a, in a way that empowered them and not talked down to them. She was wonderful. And also, she would patiently listen to the stories that the adults in the refugee families would tell. So like many of you know, um, Katie's going to be missed very much. Um, well, one thing I forgot to say, because I think there are some people here, Katie was a fantastic writer. Yes. She, she could write in a way that was so clear and, and bright. And she made our appeals for money really, really good. <laughs> she was, um, and, and our reports to our volunteers, all the recipients of Okra emails are going to dearly miss Katie. Yeah. So like many of you know, Katie's going to be missed. Um, she was a dear friend, a wonderful, wonderful person. You'll learn so much about her. So I want to say to her, go in peace, my friend. She did good in this world, and hopefully we can all work to honor her memory. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Uh, another organization that I heard some people shout out, and one that Katie was really passionate about helping, is called Melanie's Way. It grants wishes to women with relapsed or terminal cancer. Um, Pink Children's Wish Foundation, but for grown-ups. <laughs> her role combined her love of planning trips with her desire to make a meaningful difference. Katie's good friend Janine is going to come up and tell us a bit more about Melanie's way. Thank you, Michaela. Um, so Rob Chalmers, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, the founder of Melanie's Way sent these words. Melanie's Way is a grassroots, all-volunteer charity that creates wish experiences for young women with terminal cancer. Katie learned about Melanie's Way when we helped one of her close friends in the Young Adults Cancer Canada community. Katie reached out to us to see how she could lend a hand. Her impact was immediate. Katie joined our wish fulfillment team and became one of the fairy godmothers who created the wish experiences. In a short time, Katie created more than 15 wishes, touching the lives of 15 families and enabling them to share joy and create memories that would sustain each woman's loved ones after she had passed. One of those wishes was for Nadia, who was able to fly to Jamaica to renew her wedding vows with her husband thanks to Katie's planning. Katie poured her energy into any place where the charity needed her help. She contributed to fundraisers, recruited new volunteers, and generally made us better every day. 
The team at Melanie's Way holds Katie in our hearts and we strive to continue in her example. Thanks, Janine. A second interest of Katie's, in addition to volunteering, was creative writing. You've heard Pat talk a little bit about that. She randomly mentioned her writing group to me one day as though she had always talked about it, but um, I was shocked. <laughs> Not sure why. Um, I guess it surprised me that she had been meeting virtually with a group of strangers and sharing her musings on everything from Cabbage Patch Kids and her journey through the medical system. We printed out some of the stories she wrote for that group, as well as her article about what it's like to work as a translator in Parliament. So the writing table is right there. There's some really fun stories about a haunted hotel she stayed at, um, train safety she learned about as a child, <laughs> things like that. They're long, but worth the read. And then on this table with the speakers, the letters from the speakers, you'll find her article about what it's like to work as a translator at debates. Uh, I'm gonna, I asked Katie's writing group to tell us a bit about what Katie and her writing meant to them. Jason is gonna come up and share their words with you. When I was asked to do this, I didn't know that she was part of a writing group last week. So this was, <laughs> this was wonderful to read. Really um, all right, so one writer had this to say about Katie. When our life journey writing class gathered in the fall of 21, I saw Katie as a soft-spoken, reserved, thoughtful young lady. I soon learned from both the stories she shared and the feedback she gave to others that still waters run deep. You can tell us from somebody who's in creative writing. Um, earlier this year, unable to write consistently, she shared the collages she had done, another special gift that demonstrated her creative spirit. Her words and art touched me, I remain grateful that our paths cross. Um, all right, the second one. Other writers shared these thoughts. Katie was such a wonderful writer that I remember she was able to completely captivate me with a story about cabbage patch babies. Uh, exclamation point. Sorry, I didn't really <laughs> just say that. I wouldn't have thought that possible. But her writing, like her, was creative, engaging, often funny, always thoughtful, sentimental, and inspiring. My favorite piece she shared, though, was a collage she made. Again, collages, she was very artistic. <laughs> uh, during one of our last times together, Katie mentioned she did collage in her characteristically no big deal kind of way. <laughs> it's a common thing here. Of course, we all asked her to share some pieces. Seeing her visual art helped me appreciate the prism that is a creatively oriented person, and Katie in particular. So many facets and angles, so many perspectives and cues. The collage had an oversized, okay, gotta listen close to this one. The collage had an oversized piece of toast tucked into mountains with a lightning bolt above it. It perfectly, it perfectly captured her signature style, a little absurdity, and a lot of truth. I would go so far as to say that as a creative force, she was electrifying. Oh. Thanks for sharing your art, Katie. Yeah. Thanks, Mo. So, next trivia question. You ready for it? Yes. Hey, multiple choice. Everybody loves those. Uh, listen to all the options, and then I'll give you a chance by show of hand to let me know which answer you think is correct. It's a pretty easy one, I'm not going to lie. What is the third interest to the game you became passionate about in recent years? Was it A, interpretive dance, B, collage, or C, bonsai? <laughs> Who guesses A? No? B, collage? Oh, no. yeah. C, bonsai? Yeah. <laughs> Katie and I actually did a bonsai workshop together, so that's why I saw that. So, for those of you who guessed B, you're right. Another one of Katie's interests, which also grew into an incredible talent, is collage. She took a collage workshop, workshop at a cancer survivor conference in 2017 and was immediately hooked. We found stacks and stacks of random images she had cut out of magazines for future pieces. Um, they were organized by theme, they were in colors, landscapes, 
body parts, you name it, she had a binder full of images. Even during the pandemic, she was taking requests from people in her collage, online collage community. They would give her a word, um, say landscapes, and she would send them an envelope full of landscapes she had cut out that then they could use for their collages. And online, I found a couple tribute pieces that people had made using her, um, her images that she had cut out and sent to them. I thought that was really cool. Again, would she tell me about that? No. no. <laughs> she just didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, so these clippings, they served as potential prompts, but really served as an outlet for a lot of her emotions. We also have a number of her sketchbooks that she filled with her creations. They're a glimpse into the private world of Katie's head at heart. They're collages about wanting a dog. This was before Bosco was on the scene. Collages that incorporate photos from her many travels. You'll see lots of iceberg photos from her trip to Newfoundland. Collages about her frustrations with the medical system and collages with words, lots of words. One of her collages was even published. You'll find that on the crafts table, I believe. We've got the book there and a little uh, post-it note so you can see it's the toast one, appropriately. <laughs> Uh, she also created artist trading cards, as they're known. They are mini collages that she would post online and ship off to someone who was willing to make a trade. So she's got a whole binder of cards that she collected from other people and she would send hers off. Um, as a result, she had cards from around the world. Um, we've picked the sketchbooks out, so please take a look at them if you haven't already. We also encourage you to take one of the mini collages. There's plenty for everyone, so if there's one that speaks to you, like I said before, please feel free to take it home. Anyone who knew Katie knew and loved her for her personality. She was more than just a pretty face. Her sarcasm and wit is incomparable. I flew into Ottawa on Father's Day and went to her apartment for a visit. She was distracted for a few minutes. The nurse came in to do her blood pressure and all of that stuff. And so I started tidying a few things up around her apartment. And when I got back to where I was staying that night, I had a text from her saying, did you throw out my modern art masterpiece? The award-winning commentary on consumer packaging? Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, yes, I did throw out all of the packaging from your hearing aid batteries for the past 10 years. Sorry, I didn't realize it was ours. <laughs> There's also the time um, she met my daughter for the first time, my oldest daughter. Katie had her first brain surgery in 2009. I was six months pregnant. It was a rough recovery for Katie, not me, and she had a lot of frustrating side effects from that one. She lost her balance, her hearing, there was just, there was a lot going on. So um, one of the side effects was the balance, and she came to visit me when, after the baby was born, so I said, did you want to hold Palesa? And she said, sure. So she sits down and somebody hands her the baby and we get the pictures and what have you. And then we ended up having supper and we're all dishing up in the kitchen. And I say, oh, Katie, did you want Joel to take your plate to a food to the table so you don't drop it? And she looks at me dead in the eye and says, you'll trust me with your newborn, but you want a plate of food? <laughs> <laughs> So that's when I knew she was going to be a force to be reckoned with during her whole journey through the medical system. So here's another piece of trivia. This one's a bit contentious. Katie and I were talking about it, and there seemed to be not everybody's got a great memory about this, but I just want you to shout out, how many brain surgeries did Katie go through? Seven, two. I, got, I hear seven. I hear two. I hear three. three. It was at least six. And that's just brain surgeries. We actually joked that she needed like a, like a coffee club card, like she got a stamp every time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we never got around to do that. So another part of Katie's personality that always amazes me is her quiet strength. Pat spoke to that. Um, it was a fault at times too, absolutely. Don't get me wrong, just ask anyone who tried to offer help and she didn't feel she needed it. Her <laughs> clever friends, Kyle and Michelle, devised an easier way for her to get help without having to really ask for it. Dial a Kyle. <laughs> need, need food delivered? Order a Kyle. Want your AC unit installed? 
order a cut. He can, can and will do anything. She had an account number. She was a preferred client. She could write any time, day or night, with whatever she needed. She could simply write and say, uh, I'd like to book a Kyle for this day and this time, and I need it for a ride to the hospital or what have you. And that was her jam. <laughs> Booking rides, having cake delivered without having to talk to anyone, she was all over it. <laughs> Thank you guys for doing that. Amazing. Speaking of cake, let's talk about Katie's favorite dessert. Because you know she loved it. This is a true or false one. Her favorite dessert was cake. True? <laughs> Who thinks true? Show of hands. Nobody? Oh, everybody's shy now. They're like, oh my god. <laughs> false? Who thinks false? Cake was not her favorite. We've got a couple more hands. False. She and I had this conversation like shortly before she passed, and she told me it was cinnamon buns. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, it might just be a craving right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, despite all of Katie's brain surgeries, luckily her personality didn't change much. Although Trisha and I do joke that every time she had a brain surgery, they just inserted some sort of chip into her brain so that she would translate faster and better. <laughs> Super frustrating. <laughs> One part of her that really grew and deepened through her medical journey was her empathy. I'm not sure if that empathy developed as a result of her health journey or if it was the person she was always destined to become. But I know that that aspect of her deepened and grew over the 20 plus years that I knew her. It was always there. She was always a better listener, more of a listener than a talker. Most of you likely know that. <laughs> However, I feel like her empathetic side really started to shine through when she found her way into YAC, Young Adults with Cancer Canada. She began opening up more, not too much, of course, but sharing how she really felt about what was going on in her world and how difficult it really was. I texted her one day from the grocery store. I would have called, but it was Katie. You don't call Katie. <laughs> she had just been recently told that her cancer was terminal and I was a wreck. So naturally, I wrote to her and told her how much she was messing up my life and how unfair all of this was. She simply wrote back, uh-huh. <laughs> and I said something to the effect of, we still have so much to do. I have so much more that I want to share with you. This is so not cool. And then we both just listed all the things that we had hoped that one day we would be able to do together. And it was terribly sad, but it was very cathartic. I cannot even imagine 2006 Katie touching that kind of conversation with a 10-foot pole. It really cheaper. And as I said, I think Katie's involvement in YAC allowed her to give herself permission to admit the cancer is hard. Very few people understood as hard as we tried. And that what she was going through, YAC gave her space to share all those thoughts and those really big emotions with people who get it. She met many people her age with cancer who shared very difficult stories. And I like to think that that empathy that was role modeled as others responded to the stories that were shared, gave her an opportunity and made it easier for her to emulate that empathy. Perhaps she may learn some tools that made it easier for her to start opening up and share parts of her story with people who could truly understand. <coughs> Melody, Katie's good friend and roommate from university, with some things to share about Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that Katie was your best friend, and I know she, that I wasn't hers, but she was definitely mine, right? And, and I think that really shows the impact that she had on each and every person that she interacted with or developed a relationship with, um, including the relationships that she developed through YAC. As Michaela mentioned, YAC connects with young adults facing cancer. YAC provides a connection to peers who get it. This community is a bridge out of isolation and a source of inspiration. Katie first got involved in YAC through the 2017 Survivor Conference in St. John's, Newfoundland, and that was followed by a retreat in British Columbia later that summer. At both of those events, Katie connected with many participants, 
She shared openly and supported others just as much as she allowed people to support her. <laughs> At the Survivor Conference, Katie met Shauna Kirby, who had this to say. We had a wonderful slash ridiculous friendship that was based on one random postcard we found in a second hand shop. <laughs> From then on, we kept in contact with random text messages of weird things we'd seen or funny postcards and letters and pictures of her beloved dog, Bosco, who I still claim as my own. <laughs> she even made trading cards for him. She told me a story of a friend's son, it's my son, who has a binder filled with hockey Pokemon cards and his Bosco trading cards. She was incredibly talented and creative. I was told that a tip is if you look up, the tears came in, so just to bring one else still to speak. One of the YAC facilitators shared these thoughts. Katie is a community builder. She had a smile and a laugh that would light up the room, helping folks to recover from difficult conversations and memories. <clears throat> Um, she was expressive of her gratitude and her strong connection with her family and many, many friends. Mm -hmm. Authentic acts of kindness are a legacy that Katie leaves with us. We are pushed to consider how to ensure her momentum of good and grace continues. And we will all miss her greatly. Katie has clearly touched many people over her lifetime. She leaves a lasting legacy in so many ways. One of her legacies is Bosco. How many people here have met Bosco? How many people have, I'm assuming everyone's heard about Bosco at least. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bosco was an interesting dog. I'd like to say he was like super great and wonderful, but he could be like a jerk sometimes. <laughs> He was a perfect match for Katie. He needed someone who could love him and him alone. He needed someone with the time, energy, dedication, desire, all of that to pour into his training, keeping his curious mind as busy as possible. And Katie was exactly that. Katie longed for a dog, and I mean longed for a dog. She would talk about it all the time. When Bosco walked into her life, it was a perfect match. She loved that dog so much. She created Bosco swag. And there are some of his trading cards and various things, like I said before, on the back table there that she could take. Um, he was understandably concerned about what was going to happen with Bosco. He, was, he had such specific needs. I think there are lots of people in this room who considered saying, I'll take Bosco, but he really, he really needed someone with very specific talents. And luckily, I'm happy to say, he's living with the trainer, Val, who often kenneled him during Katie's illnesses and surgeries and recovery times. She has been a lifesaver. Katie was so grateful to know that Bosco would have a loving forever home. So the next trivia is Bosco trivia. True or false, Katie taught Bosco to stick him up and play dead. True or false? Yeah, good, good work, Pat. <laughs> Um, one of Katie's strongest legacies, although I may be biased, is what she's leaving her friends. Gang, in particular. Emily and Leslie are going to come and try and do their best to sum up what Katie meant to us as a friend's group. Michelle and Kyle involved. I loved it. 
At Christmas time, we would always have a party with our friends in Ottawa. Katie would do a secret Santa game at Janine and Jason's. I loved the game and the presents that I would get. Because of Katie, I started to love dogs too. It was fun when Katie showed us Bosco's new tricks, like stick him up, like stick him up. Katie would tell Bosco to stick him up and he would put his paws up. Then she would say bang and Bosco would pretend to play dead. <laughs> in 2020, when we lived in Geneva, Katie would send me and my brother Bosco mail. Bosco rolled with Bosco cards, stickers, pins, and tattoos. What I miss about Katie is how nice and fun she was. She was also a wonderful person. I think of Katie when I read my babysitter club books, especially the one she gave. She gave. Katie was someone who really inspired me because in all the time that I've known her, she always tried to help others. I think we all miss Katie very much. Thank you for listening. person uh, when we brought Emily home from the hospital to hold Emily. So on the slideshow earlier, um, you see a really tiny baby in some of those photos. Uh, that was Emily, and Katie was the first person to come over. And uh, that night, we actually had her in a bassinet, and Katie was there with me and my husband, Eric, and uh, my mom. So Katie was a real part of our family. What is friendship? According to C.S. Lewis, friendship is born at that moment when one person says to another, what, you too? I thought I was the only one. As Michaela, Janine, Michelle, Kyle, and many others planned this celebration, we tried hard to capture Katie's beautiful and rich life in ways that showed a real range and depth of her curious interests and relationships that she had formed throughout her time in Ottawa. We also wanted to convey the lasting impact she'll have on our lives and those of the wider community she touched. And I hope you think we succeeded. And I really thank everyone who made a comment today because um, we weren't totally sure about all the, all the stuff we put up throughout the room, but everyone came and said, I didn't know this about Katie or I didn't know that. So we're really happy that you thought it was joyful. As I reflect on Katie, it's a real honor to try to put into words just how much she meant to me to my kids, to my close friends, and to everybody here. My theme is friendship, but the reality is Katie wasn't just a friend, she was family. Some of us would call her a sister. She was a constant companion and presence in my life for over 20 years, no matter where we lived. And we moved a lot, and she always complained that she had to update her address book, and said we were the ones with the longest list. So <laughs> that was to make me laugh. Uh, we shared university classes in our last year together at U of O. Uh, she showed me around the office at my first real job at the Shirley Hawkins School of Translation. <laughs> also known as the Translation Bureau. And Shirley, all I need to know is a blog post where she talks about um, being a parliamentary translator. And we had talked about that post, and she said, Oh, at the end, I put that I attended the Shirley Hawkins School of Translation. And somebody fact checked her and made her change it to University of <laughs> <laughs> a few of us here were students at that school, and that's the best school in the country. <laughs> she also organized wedding and baby showers, weddings, uh, birthdays, and a million other events. Katie was there through it all. She always brought cake. Uh, and it wasn't cake, it was some sort of other edible creation. A few of you may have seen on the slideshow, or if you were lucky enough to be there, at my surprise 30th birthday party, she and Michaela made spires and fries that were cake. But they were so convincing that one of my friends took a bite of the slider burger, thought it was a burger, and had to spit it out, not realizing it was cake. <laughs> and they convincing. Um, others may recall the sushi platter that Michaela and Katie made entirely out of rice and candy. We would have loved it. Yeah. Uh, we did Christmases together, garage sales, art shows, 
volunteer days that we will not speak of. Uh, ugly sweater parties where we dressed up as the Golden Girls. Katie was Rose. Um, Michelle was Sophia. I was Dorothy. That's what you tell. Um, Michaela was Spicy Blanche. <laughs> we did trips, like that time we flew out to Calgary for Heather's housewarming. We went the stairs as well. Thank you for representing all those today. Um, one trip that, that stands out for me, um, fun fact, Katie went on my honeymoon with me. <laughs> Let me explain. Uh, had to deploy to Afghanistan, it was a bit of a surprise, right after our wedding. So instead of a honeymoon, Katie and I planned a road trip across southern Ontario with my two friends who were coming to our wedding from Sleep, uh, Paki and Hannah, and those two became uh, lifelong friends of Katie's afterwards, and she and her parents would go on to uh, visit them in Spain. Um, adventures. Katie shared endless adventures with so many of us in this room. Um, but one of my best memories isn't really an adventure. Um, it was the late night chats we used to have outside her apartment uh, on Kent Street when I'd drive her home after whatever harebrained activity we'd get up to. I think I was the only friend in the car, so I, I was really privileged in that way. Uh, even in the dead of winter, we could sit in that car parked out the front on Kent and just talk for hours. It was mostly me doing the talking, but she would always egg it on. You know, she always had that back. Um, those long nights, though, eventually faded away, and the nature of our shenanigans changed when the children came along. <laughs> Katie's friend role evolved, and she eagerly adopted all of our kids, treated them like nieces and nephews. Pub crawls gave way to kids' birthdays, daytime walks, early dinners, school functions, Christmas sing-alongs, and everything in between. No adventure was too big, too small, or too kid-friendly for Katie. Like, to our faces. Like, she complained about kids in the background. <laughs> yeah, to some people. <laughs> she always said this. <clears throat> Katie's commitment to her friends and family knew no bounds. To my kids, uh, she was Bosco's mom. For the longest time, Andrew didn't even know her name. She was Bosco's mom. <laughs> um, she was a beloved presence in their lives who remembered important occasions and sent thoughtful surprises, like the Bosco cards, videos of Bosco, pins, the col Bosco collages. Um, and she most often sent those for no occasion at all. Hearing all this, an outsider to this event would think that Katie was this larger than life extrovert, but we all know she was a classic introvert. She's also a very private person. Um, and I think Michaela mentioned this too, and I really believe this. Um, her voice and I think even her worries um, found their expression through creation. She was a creator, she was an artist. Um, arts and crafts, translation, I don't need to tell this crowd about her absolutely incredible gift of language. Um, through her trip planning, her baking, cake designs, and so many other creative pursuits, some we probably don't even know about. She truly was masterful at everything she did. I was in awe of everything she did. And if she didn't get something right the first time, she'd just keep trying. She was a master right from the start. Katie also had an uncanny ability to see the beauty and potential in things that others might overlook. Just look at your table centerpieces, folks. Um, she had a love for the random and the unconventional. She could turn a mundane day into an extraordinary adventure. An entire trip would often be crafted around visiting a roadside attraction, trying a random barbecue sauce at a food truck, uh, exploring an offbeat art installation. Uh, she embraced her quiet quirkiness with resourcefulness. I think she's probably Pat alluded to this too with the phone plans and such. She was the most resourceful person I ever met. Um, and she freely shared what she knew with all those who were lucky enough to know her. Uh, I'll never forget the time she gave me the best insider tips when I took a trip to Iceland. Like how to put a car in reverse over there, FYI. Totally different than here. I would not have gotten out of the parking lot if I hadn't remembered that tip from Katie. <laughs> and the other thing was that candy is on discount at the gas stations in Iceland on every other Sunday. Um, so if you didn't know, Katie was also exceedingly practical. <laughs> in many ways, Katie's life was a testament to the power of creating connections and community. She had a knack for making people feel truly special uh, and that they belonged. Uh, new people gravitated to Katie because of her unassuming and kind manner. We saw this happen all the time at parties when we were younger. Like, she wouldn't talk. But then those people would find her and sit next to her and they'd suddenly be talking and another lifelong friend she'd have. Like, she was incredible at this. Um, they loved her curiosity and of course her hilarious sense of humor. 
She made everyone feel comfortable no matter, no matter the setting, and this was truly the start of a lot of her lifelong friendships. But what set her apart was that she didn't just talk about caring. As Michaela has mentioned a few times, we can talk about any of those emotional things, nor would she ever expect credit for any of these absolutely amazing things that she did and dedicated herself to. She always showed her caring through action. Whether it was her captivating collage art uh, or her creative writing, Katie had a unique way of inspiring those around her. Her collage lab group, I went and looked at um, the blogs that they had. Um, they called her delightful, sweet, generous, hilarious, and kind. The creator of that community, uh, an online community, even offered a scholarship to uh, one of her master classes when she heard the news about Katie, which I thought was just such a testament to Katie. Katie extended that same creative care and dedication to the countless people she helped through her volunteer work with Bosco, Yak, um, the family she helped with refugee settlement, helping with furniture, and the list goes on. It was clear that making a positive impact was a core part of who Katie wanted to be. She was so many things to so many people. But to me, she was the absolute best kind of friend. Reliable, enthusiastic, curious, and always prompt. Like, always prompt. I was always late. She was never late. I always felt bad. <laughs> she would always give me that side eye. <laughs> she was the first to ask, how can I help? First to arrive at every party, the last to leave once all the cleanup was done. She was always there for you when you needed her, even before you had to ask. <clears throat> and then there were times when she needed us. She displayed so much resilience in dealing with her illness. She shared a little bit of her challenges with a lot of different people, and perhaps more than we'll ever know with her online communities. She rarely asked for help, but when she did, friends, acquaintances, probably even strangers a couple of times from across the city rallied around, rallied to her side, offering food and treats, rides to her appointments, care for Bosco, cleaning and other chores. She hated being the center of this kind of attention. So her closest friends, and I love the example you gave Michaela, would sneak in their love when she wasn't looking. And you know who you are. And on behalf of all of the close friends who couldn't be there physically, in the hardest times to help. This is my opportunity to say a huge thank you. There wasn't anything any of us wouldn't have done for Katie. And I trust that she knew that in her heart and was comforted by this in her most difficult times. I'll miss the way Katie laughed, the way she raised her eyebrows. <laughs> Almost, not just me at all, not everything we said. Um, her sarcasm. Her exaggerated, incredulous reactions. Like, how many photos up there? Is she going like this? Why? Like, that, was, like, that was Katie. Even now, there are countless moments throughout my day that I wish I could share with her. I actually pick up my phone to do it sometimes. Um, that they do because they just don't make sense to share with anyone else. And I know a lot of you know what I mean. Um, she just had these unique connections with everybody. Katie. We all loved you so much. You were and always will be an irreplaceable part of our lives. You made our lives so much better and so much more fun. I'm going to emphasize fun right now. Fun, being a part of them. If I could say one more thing to you, Katie, it would be quite simply, thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true, you're a pal and a confidant. Ba 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 would say thank you for being a friend. <laughs> I'm so glad you participated. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what that was, that was the Golden Girls theme song. Nineties, <laughs> nineties. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Katie would love that. <laughs> Katie, you so clearly, like, 
look at this room. You so clearly leave behind a legacy of laughter, connection, caring, service, and service to others that we will strive to carry forward in your memory. And I wanted to share this last thing with you because we poured over Katie's collage workbooks um, back in June. And uh, I found this one that had this, this cutout, like when people would write those like, letters from stalkers, you know, you'd cut out a little word and then you'd attach it all together. Anyway, Katie wasn't a stalker. But I looked at it. Well, I, at least I don't feel she was. But um, I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, this is the best life advice that Katie didn't even know she was ever going to give us. And in my book, what she wrote was, find the charm and egg on the moment. Without this, life is not as good. So egg on the moment, folks. <laughs> Take that advice from Katie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Further to what um, Emily and Leslie shared, I just want to say that um, Katie never once made me feel bad about canceling plans. Even after I had kids not replying to a text or just being lame and not wanting to go out, she never begrudged that. She was so understanding of the life of a parent, a working mom, a wife, even though none of those things were part of her reality. And I look back now and I think, that was amazing. But she was just so gracious and let me have that space and would just say, yep, yeah, that's fine. We'll do it again. Ready, check, please. Last but definitely not least, we're going to hear from Katie's dad, Bob. Kate grew up in Thunder Bay. You'll see a Thunder Bay table back there. Her parents have been living off and on in Ottawa over the years to help Katie when she would allow it. <laughs> I know they have appreciated every show of support from Katie's networks here in Ottawa. Um, colleagues from Debates, Yak, Melanie's Way, random neighbors, friends, everyone. They have made things so much easier for Bob and Cheryl and Rory. And I know that um, her family really appreciate knowing that Katie basically had a whole bunch of other family here in Ottawa when they weren't around. So if I can get Bob and Cheryl and Rory to come on up. To, uh, to go up first, I guess. Uh, I'll uh, continue the rendition of the Golden Girls here. Thanks, uh, strangely enough, it, we actually did watch that show uh, throughout. Pretty, I don't, I doubt it aired our whole childhood, but I feel like we did watch it all the time. I, it's the weirdest show considering whatever we were. We uh, all watching it. Why it was it an entertaining show? I have no idea. But it was, um, I'll. Uh, I'm just going to briefly speak about uh, Katie's non-Ottawa family, as uh, we are referred to, and um, just uh, sort of acknowledge uh, those who were uh, important in her early part of her life, I guess, and throughout uh, now as well. Uh, her grandma, great grandma, as we know, who uh, lives up in Ottawa, uh, up in Wawa, and uh, who's over 100 years old now. And our great aunt uh, Betty in uh, Western Ontario, who's also over 100 years old. Um, Katie visited with both of them extensively throughout her, her life and uh, had many great memories with them, for sure. Um, my uh, wife Shuba and our two uh, children, uh, Owen and uh, RJ, and then our uh, predeceased uh, son Jesse. Katie spent time with all of them, fortunately. And uh, we had, uh, you know, well, we had a small family. We had our uh, extended family of uh, aunts and uncles, uh, Aunt uh, Ruth and Uncle Jim in uh, uh, the Guelph area, and their three daughters, uh, Karen, Laura, and Heather, and their children. And then our Wawa family, um, our uh, 
Now Paula and Uncle Jim and their Joe, sorry, and our uh, their two children, uh, Nathan and Cassie, and uh, Nathan's family, uh, they have, and then our Aunt Melanie out in uh, California, and her two sons, uh, Kip and Troy. And uh, so yes, on behalf of all of them and us, thank you for being her family here, and uh, we truly appreciate it. Who is the last person up here? Six footer? <laughs> <laughs> we join with you today to honor Katie and focus on the joy she brought to so many people. We seek a sense of healing with the loss of our daughter and sister that we loved. And we seek strength to continue on in that new chapter of life without Katie. Back in Thunder Bay, an internment service was held on August the 3rd at Riverside Cemetery. August the 3rd was the 42nd anniversary of Katie's birth. Our family is grateful for the caring support on this occasion uh, by our good friend, um, Jim Heider. In his comments, Jim shared the following. Katie left us far too early. It just doesn't seem fair or make sense. Tree leaves should not fall in early summer. Winter should not fall after a taste of spring. Yet when these things happen, we must speak for life. Katie's story begins on a very hot day in 1981, on the August long weekend. It was a hot day. <laughs> Katie was seven days overdue. Cheryl and I decided, what the heck, let's go to the Murillo Fair. It's a, it's a county fair. Uh, this adventure was what it took to entice our baby girl into the world. In the years that followed, Katie filled her life with experiences and riches that will last as long as stories are told about her. Cheryl and I gave the names Kathleen Marie Jordana to our daughter. Kathleen was my mom's one of her names. Marie is one of Charles Monk's name. And Jordana, just because this beautiful name suited her. As you know, she was Katie to all who knew her. Some ask about the spelling, K-A-T-E-Y. Well, before her daughter was born, our Rory had been in skating lessons, Cheryl was there with him, spotted a little girl with her name taped on the helmet. You can guess which letters were inscribed on that helmet. <laughs> this spe special name stuck in our neck uh, after that hot on this weekend. Katie Group did grow up in Thunder Bay. That's our home. Cheryl and I are both uh, immigrants, but that's been our home for many years. She was enrolled in French immersion throughout her schooling. She graduated from a high school called Hammerfold High School. She went on to earn a uh, Bachelor of Arts degree in translation here in Ottawa, University of Ottawa. <laughs> her passion for travel started early at age eight. Katie enjoyed a family vacation in France, never dreaming that she would one day live there. After graduation from university, she moved to Paris where she worked as a translator. Then, um, as you've heard, Katie joined the federal government's translation bureau here in 2007. We are so proud she worked for parliamentary debates 
as part of the team. We tell folks in Thunder Bay uh, this line, uh, you own me. But, um, this team translates for preparation of concert every night. Katie loved and was loved by her extended family and friends here in Ottawa. And we, um, we had a, a celebration of life for Katie in Thunder Bay. Uh, Kyle and Michelle uh, in this room uh, joined us there. But this is one of the uh, things that we spoke about, is how she was loved by her family here. Stories are powerful, especially they, when they shed light on what being human is all about. In the past months, Cheryl and I have been struck by um, tales of Katie's love for life. To be truthful, we never fully appreciated how much she was valued by others. For example, um, the uh, remarks that you've heard today uh, about some of the organizations that she volunteered for uh, and with. Um, it was an eye-opener um, for us. You know your children, but you often do not know the, the intensity with which they um, carry on life as, uh, have the privilege of being uh, uh, with people that uh, they feel they're valued by and can work together with. So uh, we're so grateful that people have shared these stories with us in the last months. As you've heard, our daughter's identity, um, Sean Brightly, um, in uh, several roles, uh, Andy Katie, not only to um, some folks here, but also with her uh, uh, nephews um, back in Thunder Bay. And uh, we know she was known affectionately as Bosco's mom. <laughs> um, uh, Bosco was a dog who stole her heart. And uh, we were enthralled to see um, the latest tricks that Katie had taught Bosco. Um, I tried, I, uh, uh, over the past year, would often take Bosco for walks and I'd go down by the canal. This spring, the tour boats started, and um, I thought I would really impress with the <laughs> stick them up. <laughs> but um, Katie gave me more specific instructions after I got back, uh, because it was, I was a complete fan. <laughs> There are many healing stories to tell. We reflect on the knowledge of how caring relationships are precious gifts. We are aware that um, these reflections bring both pleasant experiences of inspiration, humor, and gratitude, but also the pain of the loss of such a vital young person. We experience this together with you. In closing, Cheryl and I and Rory extend our appreciation for the support provided to us through the actions and the insurances of Katie's Ottawa family. Our family has not felt alone particularly during the long days of the past year. We continue in the assurance we are held close. Thank you. Thank you, Bob and Maureen and Cheryl. Um, and the three of you really should be proud. Katie leaves us with a wonderful legacy, and that didn't materialize out of nowhere. The values she was taught by her parents, the life lessons she learned, in part from her brother. I don't know if you've seen the dueling baguettes <laughs> on the screen, but that'll come back up. 
and the experiences that her family encouraged her to have shaped a wonderful human being. She was everything I hope my daughters will be. You did well. Between the impact she made on new Canadians, cancer survivors, people with disabilities, the vulnerable, and just plain old translators, it's impressive. <laughs> For everyone else here, you can be part of Katie's legacy too. This is the final trivia question. Again, listen to all the options, and then I'll give you a chance by show of hand to commit to one of the three options. What will you do to commit? What will you commit to doing to continue Katie's legacy? Option A, go on an adventure with a friend. Bonus points if your friend's name is Aiden. <laughs> option B, yeah, volunteer on Katie's behalf. Or option C, eat cinnamon buns in Katie's honor. I've thrown some easy ones in So who's going to commit to option A, going on an adventure? Hey, yeah, so A, who's going to go on an adventure with a friend? Yeah. Like it. Option B, who's going to volunteer on Katie's behalf? That's, That's someone I'm doing. Option C, eat cinnamon buns. Yes. Yes, I like it. And option D, all of the above. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks for participating. <laughs> with that, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, please continue to chat and share stories. Again, if I have not met you yet, come up and say hello. I really, honestly do want to meet everyone in this room. Um, we'll be cutting the cake shortly. If you haven't seen it, it's a beautiful Scrabble cake. And um, there's no rush. We still have the room for at least another hour, I believe. So please just take your time and uh, share away. Thank you. Katie for her, her work with the government all those years. And the Senate, a letter from the Senate. And this is a, an article that Katie wrote about her job at parliamentary debates in 2020. You can find it online as well. It's just about uh, what it's like working there. This is the table about how much Katie loved language. There's some articles that she wrote for her writing group that we can make available to anyone who wants that. This is a table about Katie's love of games and games that she invented for people at Christmas time. This is the Thunder Bay table because, of course, Katie grew up in Thunder Bay. So we've got Hoito pancake mix. Uh, we've got Persian stickers, which are, of course, a donut delicacy of Thunder Bay. Should there be sound right now? There's mic. There's a mic down yeah. This is the table uh, for the uh, organizations that Katie volunteered for. So she volunteered for uh, Melanie's Way, uh, 
for OCRA, which helps refugees in Ottawa, and for the young adults, Cancer Canada. And it's an article that Katie helped write. Uh, she worked with Pat Wilson here in Ottawa. table where we have collages of Katie made and of course pictures of her dog. Uh, she made cards, Bosco cards with different facts about him and stickers, Bosco swag and she also made a whole bunch of mini collages that everyone can take home with them if they'd like. the table about travel, all the places that she's been, which is a lot. <laughs> Random fact that a lot of people don't know is Katie loved to collect doll parts. This is something she found in her apartment. And there's also the doll part clock that we put up. And Katie loved to collect clocks and watches. We have a little ensemble there, the live screen. Yeah. Maybe back it up there. This is a table with all of her love of Bosco. This is the arts and crafts table. The shirt that Katie made, some collages. Which is not what I see. These are some random objects that Katie loved, or different things that she loved. And this is the baked goods table, because Katie did love arts and craft and baked goods and all kinds of things. 